Joining us right now to continue this conversation, CBC contributor Jeff Sonnenfeld of Yale, of course, and Ron, Ron Epstein's back, research analyst at Bank of America, Merrill Lynch. Uh, Ron, I'm just going to go to you real quick in terms of what these numbers mean, and does it change any of your forecasts? Yeah, so the things that jump out to us are what Phil mentioned, the, the 737 return to service. Right. Um, we have it returning to service in March. Are we changing that because of what the company said? No. I mean, this is a company that has a history of over-promising and under-delivering, and, you know, eventually they'll get it right, right? So we're not changing our forecast there. So March is still it for you? March is still it for me. And, and, it, and that's because what? Meaning, how do you get to March? Yeah, how do we get to March? If you look at all the, the hoops that have to, that have to, be, have to happen, um, that's how we get there, right? So it's not just the FAA. You have to deal with the FAA. You have to deal with the ASA. You have to deal with Transport Canada. You have to deal right. with the Brazilian Authority. So there's a lot of pieces that have to come together. How much headline risk is there over the next week for investors? We talked about has this is so low. Are people going to look at this next week when um, when Dennis Mullenberg is in Washington? Is that just going to be theater? Do you see that as a moment where the stock actually takes an additional dip, or do you think actually that's an opportunity for him to hit it out of the park and somehow the stock my, moves my, higher? My sense is what's going to happen on the hill. It'll be you know, typical DC theater, right? right. I mean, it's, that, that, that's how it's going to play out, right? Um, you know, I think they did a, a decent job this quarter ring-fencing some of the risks for a while. Mm -hmm. Investors were worried about 787 production rates. They cut that. Investors were worried about the return to service of the 737. They kind of put that out there. So I think for, for a little while, the negative catalyst that could happen, they've sort of ring-fenced that. Right. So, you know, where to from here? Quarter to quarter cash flow. Right. Does the return to service slip? That kind of thing. Um, Jeff? Let's talk uh, governance here. Um, they've just uh, effectively pushed uh, Kevin McAllister, who ran the commercial aviation uh, unit, out. Um, they've obviously now split the board or, or split the chairman and CEO role um, uh, at, at the top of the company. How much, how much room does Dennis Mullenberg have to move uh, next week when he's, when he's in front of regulators and uh, policymakers? I, I think Dennis has to be clear, concise. Uh, and accurate. These are all of his strengths. It's uh, separating the roles. <clears throat> As you know, I never believed that that is a governance panacea. Sometimes it makes sense, like when uh, we saw uh, at the New York Stock Exchange when John Thane stepped in at a time of crisis, uh, we, we had an issue where uh, it was great for restoring public trust. You had a chairman who was a former CEO of Citigroup over him, uh, Dick, uh, you know, uh, Vikram Pandit, at, at Citigroup uh, uh, had right. a uh, similarly somebody parachute in there, Dick Parsons, to help run cover, and, uh, and that was very helpful uh, there. Uh, as some of his best days were when he had Dick Parsons with him. Jeff, at Raytheon, what's your, we Jeff, saw a great what's your coupling. assessment of this board? Do you believe this is a strong board? Yeah, I think this is a strong board with incredible bench strength. There are people in there who really know safety, who uh, really know the aviation business. Having uh, David Calhoun there as the, the new non-executive chairman, I think, is, is an excellent move. Uh, I, just between us, I kind of wish Calhoun was going with him to Washington next week. A person you just had on who was coming off as very reasonable, Patrick McHenry, that you guys were worshiping uh, as a, a wonderful, balanced legislator, in fact, made mincemeat out, out of a genuine hero, heroine, Tim Sloan. There was no daylight of Wells Fargo. There's no daylight between what that kindly seeming Patrick McHenry, uh, McHenry did to Tim Sloan or Wells Fargo, a, a genuine hero fixing problems he inherited, and what Elizabeth Warren did to him in the Senate. He, <clears throat> these people are, are, are capable of being ruthless and distracting. There are problems on other fronts at Boeing. The company's been great about disclosing them. The board's done a great job centralizing uh, a focus on safety. They maybe should have done that even earlier, but unifying it uh, country, you know, company-wide and having right. that report into a Jeff, central engineering I, I function to, I need is a to great stop move. you for a moment and just to disagree on one side. You just said they've been great about disclosing things, and I think even the company would tell you that they were that they thought at least the, the most latest the latest disclosure, which came Friday, they said was unfortunate in terms of how how it was done and, and how it was brought to the public. Do you think, you think you, David, uh, Andrew, you think that you think the company did something wrong uh, in, in that revelation that came up it was a test pilot from uh, 2012, 2016, right. put off some weird instant message that nobody now can figure out. And they, the company had been trying to get him as soon as they discovered it. Immediately they went to him and who'd they hear from? His criminal attorney. Uh, so they immediately turned it over to the government, to the right. Department of Justice. And the Department of Justice did not want the Transportation Department or the FAA to know about it. Why? Because the FAA, like Boeing, is under criminal investigation. 
So they couldn't fork it over. Why the Justice Department decided not to give it to their peers in the executive branch, that was a government-to-government -government call. Boeing did nothing wrong there. And we have no idea what this test pilot was even talking about. By the way, it doesn't even work for the company. Look, it works look, for I'm, Southwest. I'm not going to disagree with the legal analysis that you, you, you just suggested. But I will say, by default, there is a public trust issue. And part of that public trust issue is a function of what has felt like a drip, drip, drip in terms of inf information that has come out. This is why we saw Kevin McAllister leave. He's, you know, honorable good guy from GE. But just that there's always pulling back the Band-Aid or whatever. There's always somehow trickling of more bad news. The fact that in, in Chicago, perhaps, they didn't know as fast as they did in Seattle that there was some combination of alert equipment that wasn't on an instrument panel that, that no commercial aviation would ever have on an instrument panel, an angle of attack uh, light, but was coupled with something else, the sensor inconsistency indicator, which maybe should have been on the uh, instrument panel. The fact that that information, and it was done by a, a subcontractor, one of the 900 vendors, uh, Rockwell Collins, who made a decision that they figured out in Seattle, and maybe they didn't hear about it fast enough in Chicago, the headquarters. Right. Uh, these were issues. The problems with the with the tanker that that Phil had alluded to, uh, the the seven seven seven. There there are problems out there, which is the the seven 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 is a long haul plane. There are some problems. With, there are cracks in other seven thirty seven uh, NGs, uh, not the Max, but there are some cracks in some some uh, uh, wing issues that they're they're right. going after. Is these are things that we're backing up in commercial aviation. That uh, that the head of commercial aviation now has right. uh, has left the company, Jeff, but it wasn't any any overt deception. Right. There's no there's no right. deceit. Jeff, and uh, when company we, had bad news about right. say the Dreamliner, Jeff, the, some delays, they put that out there Jeff, right away. I think Ron Epson just Kramer. told us that. Jeff, I want to thank you uh, for your perspective as always, Ron. Thank you.